Okay, so on this particular uh, scope, it's a Takashi 106, we are fitting a lot of Starlight Express gear on the back of it. Um, and to start with, we've got the new Blue Edition Trio 694. And this comes as a combi kit, which is quite nice. So if we just have a look inside here, what we've got, uh, we've actually got the seven position field wheel, midi wheel. We've got the camera, very nice blue, very nice blue. Looks a lot better than the black, I've got to say. And we've got the load star, again in blue, very nice. Um, so it comes with a whole host of stuff. So we've got the uh, USB stick there, which will have the programs on and the drivers. We've got the auxiliary fan, which we've got to fit. Uh, and then it comes with all the USB cables and power cables, bits and pieces you need. Two inch nose piece adapter. Um, so all in the box, nice nice bit of kit. So we're gonna assemble that in a second, but for the minute, we're just gonna close that because we're also fitting, let's we'll wing this in from the side. Wham, look at that slick as. Uh, the adaptive optics. So also Starlight Express, adaptive optic kit. And we'll just pull that one out of the way and open this one up. And in this one, same again, varying adapters for different setups. Uh, the adaptive optic wheel or lens uh, and all the bits and pieces that go with it. So again, another USB stick. So everything's in there that you need. Um, and basically this is designed to, it, it basically, the there's a lens inside, it basically wobbles and it takes out any um, imperfections you've got in your guiding or in the atmospherics, in the guiding, in the mount. So this thing gives you round stars, uh, hopefully. That's the theory and apparently they're very, very good. So we're about to find out. First one we fitted. So it's a seven position filter wheel, USB, um, nice little unit, pretty slim, pretty robust, nice solid case. We've just undone, there's just these little thumb screws and we've got our seven position wheel inside. As you can see, brand new, no dust, no rubbish in there. Um, so we're gonna clean and install our filters and we've laid them out and the good idea is to mark down what order you're gonna put them in the wheel. So we're gonna go LRGB, lum, luminance, red, green, blue, HA, O3, S2, and we did have eight in the last wheel. We've only got seven in this one, so we're gonna leave that one out. Um, so all we need to do, pull out the wheel, put that to one side, and install our filters in the correct order. So we've got number one. Number one, we're gonna put in our luminance. And you're trying to keep as much dust out as you can, um, but we'll clean them afterwards anyway. And then number two is our red. Just checking that they're all as they should be when you're putting them in. Through them in, nice and tight. Number three. Always a good idea to check a couple of times that you've actually got them in the order that you think you have, because uh, it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility to actually put them in the wrong ones, which I've actually done myself. And it took us a little while to suss out. Screw these in. Take too long, these are pretty simple ones. These got no fiddly screws. A lot of the bigger filters, they're unmounted, so they don't have this shroud around the outside, and then it's a bit of a problem. These are all Astrodon filters, so good filters going here. And there we go, so we just double check they're all tight, they are. And then we'll just make sure they're clean. So as you can see, they all look 
nice and spangly. So just look in the light, make sure you've got no smears. Dust isn't such an issue because the programs will deal with dust. But if you've got smears in there, that's harder. You'd have to take the filter out and clean it. And pretty happy that they're all good. A little bit on there. That's the fun. We'll edit that bit out. So we're happy that we've got all of our filters where they should be, all in the right positions. We'll just double check. In number one, we've definitely got luminance. In number two, we've definitely got a red. In number three, we've definitely got a green. We've got a blue in number four. We've got a HA in number five. We've got an O3 in number six, and we've got a S2 in number seven, exactly as we've got them written down there. So when we come to program them in, we'll know they're all correct. So back in with our field world, just make sure there's no dust inside, uh, which there isn't. We slot our field all back on, which is all nice. Turn it around to a luminance. And then we can also install the off-axis guider in the correct position. No dust. And that would all be correct. And then what we can do with the off-axis guider is put that down so we know it's actually in line with the camera. So we've got a good place to start is there. So we've got to put, make sure our wheel, our center bolt in. Number one, put our wheel back on. Just do these up loosely to start with, so you can know they're in the correct position. one. There we go. It's all nice and tight. So all correct. So the light will come in this side. The off-axis guider will pick up the stray light which will go up through to the guide scope. And then on this side will be the camera. And as you can see from that, the off-axis chip is not in the way of the light coming through. So we're in about the correct position, but we can adjust it afterwards. But there we go. That's how we fit filters into a Starlight Express media wheel, new media wheel, nicely made. We'll uh, put this on the gear and carry on. Okay, so we've assembled our wheel, we've put our filters in, we've cleaned all that, we know that's all good. Now we need to uh, attach our camera and align the chip. So you need to make sure that the chip, as is an oblong, is aligned with the off-axis guider in the filter wheel, or on the guider. So the way to do that, the best way to do that, is to fit your adapter, just release the screw so this moves, as you can see. And then if you screw the camera on, and get it to its done up position. And then if you turn the um, camera around, you can see in the back that the, let's see if we can get that. Right, tough one, there we go. The chip, the camera chip, is actually not square to the off-axis guider prism. And we need that square. So we get that in its correct position. 
like so. Now you can see the chip is square to the prism. And then the secret is, it's not a secret, but you'd be amazed how many people struggle with this to get these lined up, is just to mark the position where the adapter lines up with the filter wheel. As you can see, I've done just a little mark, little pencil mark. And then take off the camera. Put the adapter back in the correct position so your pencil line lines up. Tighten up the three screws. Check that everything's clean. There's nothing, no dirt, no anything in the end, which there's not. Screw the camera on. Do it up. And then when we look in the end, you can see we are, let's get that in the light somehow. There we go. We're in the correct position. So the camera tube is now square to the prism, which is exactly what we want. So that's that bit done. Next thing is now the uh, the adaptive optics. So let's assemble all that. Make sure that the adapters correctly all done up. Which it is. And as you can see inside there's a lens and this just vibrates and um, works some magic. We'll see. And that screws on to the filter wheel. Okay, so that's all in position. Again, just checking that there's no dust or anything on the on the lens very carefully. Clean as. So you can see, and we can see right through now to the the prism chip and the camera chip. And apparently there's even though there's another piece of lens there, it doesn't it only um, the light loss is so small it's um, negligible for the benefit gains of the, op of the adaptive optics. Our adapter goes on. And there we go. That's ready now to screw into our telescope. Um, we've not got an adapter, it's just a two inch nose piece, but we know that it all fits. Uh, so there's a couple of other bits to do. We've got the auxiliary fan to go on. Will fit, we just release the two screws on the back. And hopefully this lines up. It does. That's that. And we've got a double power adapter, but we won't be using that. We've got other ones for that. And then the op the um, the guide camera will just screw onto the off-axis guider once we've got this assembled on the scope because um, or it could be in the way out there. As you can see it's quite a nice compact unit. Uh, everything fits nice. The blue looks great. We'll now bring in the telescope and assemble this on the scope um, and go from there. <laughs> 